Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to work on some derivative problems involving trig. Before we do that, we have to remind ourselves what the derivative is of the six trig functions. Now, if you recall watching some of my other videos, I showed you guys a short way on how to remember this. First, we write down sine and cosine, and then we write down tangent. We begin by then writing the reciprocals in the way that I'm doing that with this orange highlighter. Everything that begins with a C gets a negative. So what I do is I do plus minus plus minus plus minus, and then I say cosine is with uh, sine and sine is with cosine. So I give each other to these guys, and then I say tangent is powerful, cosecant is powerful, so they get powers, and secant is secant tan, and cosecant is negative cosecant cotan. So you have to know these before we start the problems. All right, so let's begin. So in this problem here, everything is separated by a plus or a minus. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the basic derivative. So the derivative of y is going to be dy dx. The derivative of x squared is going to be 2x. The derivative of secant, you just go right over here and you take secant. And that's secant tangent. Okay, so you do not write this as 1 over cosine before you do it and do the, uh, the quotient rule. You just say the derivative of secant is secant x tan x. And then the derivative of 1 is 0. And then you're done. I haven't discussed this notation with you guys just yet. But this is another way of writing f prime of x. But in this case, I have a y. And so... We can write y prime, or we can write dy dx, okay? So I'm going to begin implicit differentiation in the next uh, video, so then I can show you what that means. All right, so let's continue here. Now, 3 is, so we got to take the derivative. You start with y. Y is dy dx. 3 is connected to cosecant x, so it's just like a coefficient. The derivative of cosecant, it begins with a c, so it's negative cosecant cotan and now this guy here before you do the quotient rule remind yourself that there is no x in the numerator so the quotient rule doesn't really have to happen what you can do is you can write down 5 over x as 5x to the negative 1 and then do basic power rule so that's going to be negative 5x to the negative 2 you should clean that up so you don't have any um negative exponents, but that's how you do that. In the next problem, we're going to have a product rule. The reason why it's a product is because it's a x times an x. So how do we do the product rule? First, you should start off by writing dy dx, and then you're going to keep the first term, which is this guy here, take the derivative of cotangent. Cotangent starts with a c, so it's negative, and cotangent is powerful, so it gets the power. So I kept the first, derivative of the second, plus I'm going to keep the second and then the derivative of the first, which is 2x. The only thing I can really do here is write down negative x squared cosecant squared x plus 2x cotan x. And basically, you should just put the algebra in front of the trig. Now, this guy right here number 178, the derivative of y is dy dx. The derivative of x by itself is just 1. And then this looks like a product rule. I'm going to leave that minus out there. The derivative of this is a product rule. So I'm going to keep the first. The derivative of sine is cosine plus keep the second. And the derivative of x to the third is 3x squared. Now I'm just going to distribute that minus. And then we're going to be all set. Once again, I'm putting the algebra in front of the trig. There's nothing else to do here. That's all you have to do. In for this problem, I know I'm going to have to use the quotient rule because there's an x in the denominator, x in the numerator. The x in the numerator is stuck to a trig. So I'm going to say quotient rule. If you guys remember the quotient rule, it says keep the bottom, derivative of the top. The derivative of secant x is secant x tan x minus keep the top, the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. To clean this up, there's really nothing to clean up. And you're just going to write this like this. The only thing, if you would like, you can factor out a secant in the numerator, but 
not necessary to do that. And that's your answer. There's nothing else to do. That's how we do the quotient rule. This guy here, now guys, anytime you have a trig with a trig, you want to see if you could reduce it or do something about it. I'll tell you a short uh, trick. Tangent, like I said in many videos, always goes with secant. And so this really is not going to do much for me except for make it sine times sine. So I'm actually going to erase this and keep the original problem, okay? But first see if you could reduce it. So for number 180, I'm going to first take, do not forget to take the derivative of the y. Product rule, keep the first derivative of the second plus keep the second derivative of the first and then you're literally done. There's not nothing really you can do in this case. So that's your answer, I'm not going to rewrite it. So in this problem, in problem 181, I wanted to show you what would happen if you sh if you distributed this. Now, technically, anything to the first power, it's probably easier just to distribute. But in this case, you're going to have a product rule here and a product rule here. So if you don't mind doing two product rules, you can do that, or you can just do the product rule once. So I'm going to go ahead and do the product rule once. Once again, the derivative of y is dy dx. And then I'm going to, so let me erase this here. Um, the dirt, so this is a product rule. I'm going to keep the first and then do the derivative of the second. The derivative of one is zero. The derivative of sine is cosine, but there's a negative in front of it. So I'm going to put negative cosine. Plus, I'm going to now keep the second and take the derivative of the first, which is going to be one minus sine x. So pause the video if you need help, but that's what that gives you there. And you're going to, if I distribute this, I'm going to do negative x cosine x minus cosine squared x. And then here, I'm going to get 1. Let me put a plus there. 1 minus 2 sine squared x plus sine squared x. Now, there's a lot of identities in this that you guys may want to do. But first, let's just put this together here. They both have the same exponent, so you could combine them, and you're going to get negative x cosine x minus cosine squared x plus 1, and then this guy here is going to be minus sine squared x. Now, you could actually do something even better. This guy here and this guy here, if I factor out a negative, I'm going to have cosine squared plus sine squared, so that's going to be a 1. So I have a minus one here, and then I have the plus one here, so they actually cancel out. And the whole thing ends up being negative x cosine x. So that's that one. You should try it.